Uh, happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to our brand therapy sessions. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. I'm very, very, first of all, uh, me, Yossi, and also Michele, that is my partner in Crescenzinco, are very happy with uh, the good participation uh, we are having uh, at your first um, brain therapy panel discussion. It's meant to be um, a very uh, open uh, session. Um, we have uh, three very interesting guests that we will introduce later. Uh, and we have also collected some questions that we received um, during the registration of our participants. Uh, and we will uh, give some answers during the, the discussion. Um, uh, Yossi, I, I would like to say a few words about, uh, um, I mean, about us, uh, um, I mean, about brain therapy. Um, brain therapy is um, a consulting project uh, for small and medium sized businesses um, born together with our uh, friend uh, and excellent professional Yossi Fischer. Uh, the, the project was born from the idea of combining uh, the skills of uh, our communication and events uh, agency uh, with uh, the brand development, uh, development expertise of Yossi. And the interesting fact is that the project was born a year ago uh, and starting being developed from January 2020. So before uh, the outbreak of the, of the pandemic, um, already convinced one year ago of the need for a more um, human-centric and holistic, as we say, uh, approach to marketing and communicate small and medium, medium enterprises. And the pandemic has done nothing but encourage us to uh, move with this project in this in this direction yeah definitely so um yeah thank you everybody like luca said for joining us um we're very excited about this brand therapy um collaboration that we're doing it's very interesting like luca said because we started this in january before the pandemic and when everything happened it almost made it even more important and we know that so many businesses right now are struggling um with their finances and also with their direction so we decided to create brand therapy panel sessions as a way to really give back and to have some conversations with some uh, you know, industry professionals that are doing very many things. So it's, you know, it's not just fashion, it's not just lifestyle, it's not just travel, it's not just alcohol. Um, we have a lot of really great guests here, which we will introduce one at a time. Um, and we're really excited. So just so everybody knows, we turned the chat off for this particular webinar. We asked for everybody for their questions in advance. So thank you everybody who sent in your questions. We have some really, really great ones that we'll be discussing during the next hour, hour and a half or so. And then we're also gonna ask questions to all of our industry guests. So we'll be able to ask them very specific questions about their field and about their business. Because the really cool thing about business right now is that we can all learn from every business right now. It's no longer specific to your niche or your genre because we're talking about social media and we're talking about communications. And these are all platforms that we all share together that we're all on. And so I think it'll create some really great um, perspective for everybody. We, we are here because we really hope and uh, believe that it will. And uh, that is that. So thank you so much for uh, signing on again. Um, we have great attendance. Uh, we actually sold out our tickets this morning and uh, we decided to add just a couple more last minute. So if you ended up getting one of the few extra tickets we put in there, thank you so kindly. We're really happy that you got a chance to be a part of this. Um, so me and Luca are gonna be hosting today. And um, like we said, the, the world as we all know, it has drastically changed. You know, communication is way more important than ever. 
um, especially in the digital space, because at one point in time, there were so many options for businesses to, um, to promote and to show their face, right? There's live events, there's retail spaces, there's you know, businesses that are providing services. And when people walk by and you get that walk by traffic, it's a lot easier because that's also a part of a communication strategy. Now though, while we're all in the house, we're getting a lot of different types of data. Of course, everything's skewing, everything's kind of shifting a lot more to digital, but we also have to be aware that this is not gonna last forever. The world will open up again. So of course we want people to go from a nice to have social media strategy to a really successful one now. And we also want people to be aware about their business as a whole, because when the market does open, the communication strategies will change. But for this particular brand therapy session, we really want to focus on social media because it's on everybody's mind. Everybody's very aggravated by all the platforms because there's so much more content on now. We have so much more time and we want to make sure that everyone gets the most out of it. We also understand that we have a very wide spectrum of attendees. We have CEOs and we have uh, business owners and we also have independents. So we're gonna to try to share some, some strategies and tactics and have a conversation that will hopefully be able to help everybody um, in whatever space that it does. So um, to start off right now, um, we're gonna introduce our first guest. Uh, her name is Maria Cristina uh, Yazeli, and she is, the strategic, she is a strategic marketing manager and business mentor who has worked with some of the biggest brands and companies in the world, heading international projects with Campari Group, and Unilever's portfolio of brands. So that is a massive, massive company. Well, both of them are, and we're very, very happy, Maria, to uh, to welcome you to our panel discussion today. Hello, Maria Cristina. Thank you, Yossi. Thank you, Luca. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm very excited, and also, Yossi, you have to offer me a drink because uh, I'm going to start. So. Fingers crossed. Um, as Yossi said, uh, the, uh, their idea today is to share with you uh, what you should do through or text the social media platforms. But I think uh, that uh, my, my help can be also because uh, talking about the point of view of a brand or a company. I've spent a lot of time working in a company, so I'm not probably an expert, as Yossi, Luca, and Michele, and I think the other guests are on their uh, uh, discipline because I'm a brand, I was brand manager, marketing manager, event manager, uh, director manager, so uh, marketing director, whatever. But the point is that I, I have been uh, always working with uh, an agency or more than one agency as a partner. So I learned a lot and I have um, I hope I can bring you some uh, interesting point of view or some interesting answers. Uh, it depends on the questions, right? Yeah, no, no, of course. And I think, you know, the, the great thing about having, and by the way, you're being a little bit too modest. You're very talented and super smart. So let's just not get confused by that. Um, the really cool thing about uh, working with these massive brands is that you actually have been able to travel into different countries as well. So you've been able to see not only the effects from different markets, but also how each one uh, plays into the core foundation of the brand in different countries, which is really, really amazing. So we do have some questions for you and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get into them right now. Um, the first one that we have here is, um, uh, we, we were talking before off camera a little bit and you were talking about the power of brand collaborations. Now, it's very interesting because in this market, everybody, you know, a lot of companies are very focused on themselves. And when they do yeah. collaborations, they do them with companies that are outside of their main niche. But you were mentioning a few interesting things, how, um, you know, BMW and Mercedes-Benz connected to do ride shares. Um, and I found that really fascinating. So why don't you talk to us a little bit about the power of brand collaborations, where you go from looking at people as competitors to actually looking at them as allies? So yes, uh, it, I have a very clear uh, this, uh, this aspect, but uh, before uh, I would like to, to share with all of you what uh, we mean uh, with uh, this kind of collaborations. 
Uh, as a marketer, I have always uh, collaborated with, uh, again, agencies, other brands, just uh, for example, during events, uh, I was in the uh, spirits beverage um, industry and even in home and personal care industry. So you, all the time, you need to work with the, someone else. Um, but uh, recently, as you said, the big brands starting to, to, to have a kind of collaboration that is called competition, uh, competition, sorry, that uh, in the end is when two business uh, competitors decide to, to be together because they have a common hope or let's say they have a common needs and together they know they can be better uh, reach their goals. So the example you brought uh, BMW with the drive now and uh, uh, Mercedes with, with the car to go, I think uh, everyone uh, who lives in a city where uh, there is car to go, probably now they also know about drive uh, now, but together now they are shared now. So this was interesting because at the beginning I thought, oh my God, Mercedes and BMW, really? I, I grew up in the car world because my father wa was a car dealer. So I was very, very surprised. Not because they put together, we saw a lot of uh, new uh, company, thanks to some, uh, you know, partnership, new FCA, for example, that now is also with the Peugeot. So that is different. In this case, two brands decided to share their know-how, their experience, their products, their skills. It's all about trustness. So they are sharing many things because they have a one common goal to be sure that they will reach the perfect things for their stakeholders and mainly their customers, their clients. And if uh, uh, someone uh, uh, went uh, deeply on that, they didn't stop just uh, with this drive now platform where you can pick a little smart or a, a countryman uh, mini Cooper or cars like that. But they decide also to go head over because together they are trying to build their uh, automated driving technology so they are going very very i mean they are adding uh, all their knowledge they're sharing all their knowledge and they know what they're doing we are not talking about two new yeah. you know companies so they know exactly what they're doing another example and i remember at that time i was uh, in san francisco in the us uh, after many years in Milan. So I was very, very surprised. I, I was, uh, we were working as Campari America with the Starbucks for a small part of their business because the beverage part is not their wasn't their focus. And I heard about this news uh, that uh, Princi Bakery, that is an Italian company of bakery from Milan, was uh, coming to the US market. And I was quite surprised. But the reality, they work together. They decided to um, put together their knowledge with the, the big player within the US market, right? The Starbucks. So they started with in Seattle and they create a new concept, uh, the, um, I can't, the reserve uh, roastery concept. Yeah, the, 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 the big uh, concept in, in Milan, which was like the big... Yeah, later they, exactly, later they brought that in Milan too. But the point is that thanks to this partnership, um, Princi Bakery could start a new business, uh, I think in the biggest market, you know, the US. And on the other side, Starbucks, that was already very developed all around the world, uh, thanks to Princi Bakery, could enter in a very tough market for them because uh, for who who doesn't know, in Italy, we have a specific culture about uh, the coffee, the espresso, the cappuccino, the brioche. It's everything but the experience you have at the Starbucks. So I think this is another great example. Again, they share their knowledge, their business, their products, uh, their know-how, everything. But they had the one uh, goal. Together, they needed to develop their, their business in other markets. Another easier, uh, I mean, smaller example probably, but uh, because we're talking about a digital uh, platform, I couldn't uh, uh, also bring this example to you guys. Uh, think about LinkedIn. 
LinkedIn is a social platform that I remember at that time, uh, the idea was uh, for mainly people like me who are uh, owner of themselves, right? I, I, had, I always work uh, with, for a company, with a company on brands and things like that. So they were a platform where I could sell myself to the next company, let's say. And uh, they decided to work together with the main professional aid hunters that were more, uh, they had more experience than just a platform. I'm talking about that time, not uh, LinkedIn today, that is awesome. Yeah. And aid hunters uh, a company on the other side, they accepted uh, to be partner with the LinkedIn. And today, many of them work very close to, to LinkedIn. So I think, uh, I hope these three examples are helping you guys um, to understand how it's important to collaborate. Of course, yes. this is a strong mm -hmm. collaboration. In fact, it's a co-petition. But uh, again, don't forget, we can't uh, know everything. We don't have all the answers. So working together, we can better reach our goals. Which is yeah. really, really interesting, yeah. Yeah, Luca? And yes, I think it's a very important topic nowadays because um, it's a very uh, common need for everyone to share uh, the knowledge, to share experiences, uh, not being separated, not consider uh, everyone competitors like it was a um, few years ago. Old school yeah. style. It's yeah. an old school style. Uh, it's an old school style. Yes. Yeah, so. And now it's more and more um, important not to be um, uh, selfish uh, as a brand, as a company, uh, as an agency, but it's very important to share the knowledge, uh, to share uh, the same um, needs and the same goals mm -hmm. and not being scared to uh, put themselves together, put ourselves together. Yeah. If we have a common, a common goal, a common, a common scope. Uh? Yeah, so it, it's a very imp important topic. What uh, what Maria Cristina is saying now is talking about now. It's very very important, and I think it's a very contemporary uh, topic, especially especially now in a very a critical uh, worldwide situation like this, where if you live and work only by yourself and think about only your specific uh, goals, you don't go anywhere anymore. Right. Yeah, and you know what, I think that, uh, thank you so much for that. It, it makes really a lot of sense. And um, before we move on to the next question, um, there's something that I also wanna add there, which I think is important for everyone to notice. When we're talking about these collaborations, the, the, the key thing to know how and who to collaborate with, because a lot of people are like, well, what makes the most sense? This is where knowing your brand and knowing your values and your culture makes the most sense. So when you notice it wasn't BMW and Fiat, it was BMW and Mercedes. They're on the upper level of luxury automobiles. And so being able to share that knowledge back and forth is actually building them up. It's not sharing information that doesn't matter. That would maybe maybe they do something, you know, this is more of a long-term strategy. Same thing with Starbucks and Princey, right? They're both at the level of service. It's kind of like quick, fast, efficient, but high quality food and, 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 and coffees. And so I think knowing, you know, the brand that you're going into and anytime you get into a partnership, if it's not 50-50 in terms of what the benefit is gonna be, then it's gonna lose from the start because you're gonna have different goals. You're gonna have different objectives and then the overall creative is not going to execute at the level that you needed to to understand the reports to better improve your business. And I think that's something important for people if they didn't realize all of those collaborations that Maria Cristina mentioned, they're all very much in that same space. So they can actually help each other grow. They're not kind of competing in the same space that they're trying to collaborate in. They needed to have the same need as well, yeah. Yeah, totally, totally. So, um, okay, so we have about five more minutes with Maria Cristina. There's a really great question here that, 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 we, that we got that I would love to ask you because you've worked with so many companies and brands inside of these major businesses. So um, we have a question here and it says, uh, it's kind of like a two-part question. So 
what are big brands doing better than small brands right now? And also what are small brands doing bigger than big brands right now? And I think that would be an interesting question to kind of keep the conversation going. It, actually, uh, it's a tricky question because uh, I think uh, sometimes some small brands and some big brands are doing better things than other brands. Okay, so sometimes it's the same thing. This can happen, but in general, uh, the the main thing that the big brands uh, uh, are doing better in now specifically, but in general, is the fact that uh, because they have uh, resources in terms of people, timing, knowledge, know-how, and uh, important uh, is also the budget, the money, and because uh, um, the experience they had uh, and the know-how and the access to the best partners uh, as, for example, agencies uh, or other kind of uh, partners, um, because all these things, uh, they for sure when they know what they do when they have a clear strategy they are what they are doing better is plan every day is planning every day um, so they are uh, able to immediately probably change something because they have all the resources you need in this case but don't forget they have the brand this uh, they have a, a clear brand strategy or brand identity this is the main thing, but there is also um, the fact that they, because they are experienced, they also are very good to keep being consistent. That is a, an element that is fundamental. So they know what happens uh, if they are not consistent because they create confusion in their consumers. So this is, a, this is another thing. So it's a big, uh, it probably is not a, a concrete answer, but, uh, Make they, um, I think it give the, gives the idea of what I mean. On the other side, a small brands in this moment, uh, uh, especially, I think uh, what they are doing better than big uh, uh, brands are two things. Uh, first of all, they risk less than a big brand, so they can take more risk. And sometimes, it, especially in, in moments like this, uh, uh, can be an advantage. On the other side, they are good at adapting and at changing because they are small, they are slim. And uh, also because of all of these things, uh, they, especially recently, they, they are more good uh, by hearing their customer, clients, followers than a big brand sometimes. Right. So, and why this? I think uh, the small brand today is very hungry than a big brand. A big brand usually is in a bigger company. They are confident, you know, they, they will be there even after this strange moment, strange period. And the other things, the, the small brand still recalls, recall very well what their dream is. The mission oh. statement. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Think, uh, yeah. 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 It's really, it's really interesting because I think, and those are really great points because I think it, it's going to bring a lot of value to people that are listening to this because like you said, like on one hand, when you're a big brand, you know, you have the budgets, you have the, you know, the, 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 uh, the people and, you know, everybody in the organization to invest and really make things really polished and really great. But then on the other hand, they have a lot more levels to go through before they can make decisions. Whereas small brands, they can just decide something with three people, two people, five people in a room. And in this type of marketplace, it's a, it's a strength because now if the market changes, you can just adapt and you can execute a lot faster um, than some of the bigger brands. And, you know, that's kind of what I was noticing. Um, so there are pros and cons. And then one thing I just want to mention, I think is important is that Corona, uh, th th this whole situation right now, in my opinion, I believe it really leveled out the playing field and it gave smaller brands and startup brands a bigger chance and a bigger shot than I think some of them are realizing. So I just want to kind of put this into perspective for people. So when you're a startup or a small brand and you have, you know, two or three or five or 10 employees, for example, and because of Corona, because of this whole situation, you had to drop your employees to two listen, nobody wants to do that. It's very difficult, but you went down eight people. Now what happens is these bigger brands, let's say they have a thousand, 2000, 5,000, when they go down from, you know, 5,000 to 600 employees, 
Well, now the gap between small brands and big brands aren't as, is, isn't as big as it used to be. And I think that, you know, obviously people get intimidated by the big companies and the brands, but looking at the, um, looking at the economics right now and looking at the actual facts of how these, brand, these companies are shifting, I think that it puts smaller brands in a much bigger space um, to be able to be closer to their competition than they think. I, I totally agree. Luca, yes. what do you think? Um, no, yes, it's something very, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a theme, it, it, it's a topic that also um, me and Michele, my, my business partner in Crescenzi and Co, feel in a very strong way because, um, of course, as everyone uh, in the past eight months, uh, we had to face a very difficult and critical moment like everyone else. Um, but what we did, uh, we are anyway a, a small agency compared to, to the biggest one, to the biggest and international ones. What we um, are trying to do uh, also now uh, is adapting our agency adapting our um, our uh, services and our strategies uh, to the new needs of our customers. So we are uh, changing in a very, very fast way that was um, unthinkable and unpredictable uh, seven, seven months ago. So uh, we know, uh, me and Michele, that the situation will be critical probably also in the next month. But uh, if there is something that for us is very challenging and also very um, moving is that uh, we have the chance to change and to uh, adapt our, our business in a very faster way than before, uh, because we uh, we can risk everything, and so we we have nothing to risk. I mean, <laughs> yeah, right, exactly, right. 100%. I, I'm joking, but <clears throat> you know what I mean. It's now. It's the moment to um, moving uh, fast forward and maybe doing things that uh, just six months ago uh, would have taken more time uh, to be done. Uh, now we can say, okay, <clears throat> let's, do that. let's invest in, 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 this, in this field, in this, in this business. Uh, let's um, uh, improve our skill in, in this part of our business. And now anyway, uh, it, it's difficult because emotionally, uh, we are overwhelmed by a lot of bad news, but from a, a business point of view, um, we had uh, we we have more courage to do things that a uh, few yeah, months ago, right? yes, were considered more risky for us. Okay, because everything was going very well, and we had our business um, focused on some uh, very precise uh, things. Uh, now we are discovering also the, the pleasure to be more uh, innovative, to be not to be scared to go to a client and say, why we don't do this? Why we don't do that? Uh, we can do something more, something different. Don't consider ourselves as you consider ourselves before, because now we can do this and that, and our skills are uh, developing, improving. And so it's very hard moment on one hand, uh, but it's also a very challenging uh, moment on the other. Yeah, definitely. And uh, so, um... We got to have to say goodbye to Maria Cristina right now. Um, thank you so, so much for taking the time. I think uh, to have somebody at your level of expertise um, is invaluable and, and we really appreciate it. It was my pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Thank yeah, you for having me. Thank you, Maria Cristina. Thank you. Just, you. Be, just be quickly before you go. So um, if people want to get a hold of you, they can find you on LinkedIn. 
Um, LinkedIn, absolutely. Maria Cristina Iaselli. So I, I think also on Instagram, Macriase is a little bit complicated. So probably on LinkedIn is the, the right way to do that. Okay. So great. guys, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Maria Cristina. Bye. Ciao. Always a pleasure. Bye-bye. Oh, All right. That's a very interesting uh, conversation discussion, especially at those highest levels. And I think that, uh, you know, it's really important to, uh, you know, look at all these opportunities. And like you said, to innovate, you know, to look at your opportunities and what's in front of you. And when you don't have all this physical stuff and you have to go a bit more digital as well, I think it's really interesting to look at social media and different platforms as a way to allow you to evolve and adapt. So, um, you know, something that I think is, is really interesting about social media, and I think what everybody really needs to uh, be aware of is that when you're promoting your brand or business or company, um, whether it's a service or whether it's a product, um, whatever it is, what social media has now allowed us to do is diversify the message that we're giving to the consumer. So, for example, where sometimes brands in the past would pick one strong platform, whether it was LinkedIn or Facebook or some of them, right? Like TikTok kind of blew up during the pandemic. So I don't want to use that as an example in this moment. But what ends up happening is they would focus on, let's say, Instagram, and then they would create their communication strategies outside at events, at collaborations, and they would find ways to express it because before social media, even some of the biggest players was kind of like a nice to have, but business is going well and we're doing it outside here. Now, what I think is really interesting for, for people to really look at right now is the fact that social media has so many platforms where you can diversify the presence of your, uh, your, your company. So, for example, there's a lot of companies and brands out there that think because they're on four, five, six different platforms, they're actually getting a bigger audience and a bigger reach. The problem, though, is what some people don't think about is that if you're sharing the same content and the same message, on all these platforms, you're actually minimizing your reach. So if I'm following you on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, you're sharing the same stuff, I'm probably only gonna follow you on one or two maximum because I don't want the same stuff over and over again. So what, insta sorry, what social media has allowed us to do is, is to look at the, at the scope and say, okay, so if you're on Instagram and you have great photos and you have great products and you know, you're really building your, your market there, that's really great. But if you're a brand that is focusing more on giving back on different causes, you can use LinkedIn to talk about that and you'll generate more interest on LinkedIn on the business side of things than you probably would on Instagram. So now you're really opening up the dynamic and you're creating a much more variant um, set of customers and clients because now you're hitting people on the different platforms in the language that they're trying to speak on those platforms. And, uh, and I think that uh, what, Maria Christi, uh, what Maria Christina said was really great is, you know, the fact that the big guy, like the big businesses and the little businesses, they're closer than you think. And being able to really, you know, look at that and realize that we're all using these same platforms um, really puts a, a leg up, you know, gives an advantage to the ones that are smaller, that really knows what they're doing. But then also the big ones, because now they have more uh, resources to really push content and be able to really figure out um you know what that strategy is um yeah. what do you think, no yes it, it's it's one of the topics we are talking about in this panel discussion that is mainly dedicated to social media but as we are seeing uh, the conversation um, of course uh, becomes wider and wider because they are not uh, if we talk about social media, uh, we talk also about communication in general, and we also talk about marketing strategies in, in general. So we are talking about social media, but we are saying that we are experimenting that the discussion uh, becomes more uh, wider and wider. And um, about one of the topics we were talking about, and it was um, how to create a, a breakthrough social media strategy. Um, there are some data, interesting data, because 
the theme is is interesting because pandemic ex accelerated and enhanced communication on social media. Uh, I took some data uh, that are relating to Italy, but I think that it's quite common worldwide. Uh, since the beginning of the emergency in Italy, there has been an increase in the use of social media by 70%, 70%. Um, so uh, social media accounts for more than a third of our connected time in the past month, um, with people spending an average of uh, nearly 2.5 hours a day on social platforms. Uh, so we can say that um, social network are back the meeting place, uh, the connection tool they always have promised to be. And this fact, however, uh, it's making the effectiveness of communication more difficult because of the huge amount of contents that um, have been poured on social media. Um, and from this perspective, it is increasingly important to choose the right channel to be, uh, to be in and the right content to communicate because it's very important now because yes, we are all more connected to social media, but we are receiving every day a huge amount of information, a huge amount of uh, communication from brands, from uh, and, and you know everyone is becoming a brand, yeah. <laughs> and so it's very important. So companies, brands, in, in order to communicate better, especially in this moment, um, must more than ever the target audience they have, the target audience they want to communicate with, uh, they have to outline the buyer personas more than ever and um, adopt a narrative language uh, that users feel their own. And I think that this is one of the most uh, important things now about how to communicate on, uh, on, on social media. Um, and yeah. also another fact, Yossi, is that um, we must be always uh, updated on what's, um, on what's happening on social media because the tools are, devel are developing uh, day by day, hours by hours. Yeah, yeah and it's true. It's true. Yeah, no, I agree. And I, I don't want to cut you off, but because we, we'll, we'll keep on talking about a lot of this stuff. Um, but just to add on to what you say before we go on to our next guest, yeah. is that what I want a lot of people um, to realize is social media is a communication tool and communication tools, the digital communication tools are much wider than just Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, and TikTok, uh, Medium, Spotify. Like, you know, there's also platforms like we're using right now, like Zoom is an app. And Zoom is a communication app. And yeah. we're using it, for example, to have these types of conversations. But we started using this, uh, we started using Zoom, a lot more people started getting to know it closer at the beginning of the, of, of the pandemic when everything started. Yeah. And then what people started doing and what Luca was saying, and that's why I wanted to kind of just interrupt you for a moment, was you brought up a really good point. It's that we have looked at new platforms and then being like, okay, how can we innovate this platform to work for us? So there are some luxury brands out there that you can set up an appointment with and they can literally personal shop with you on a Zoom webinar and they can show you the new collection. They can answer your questions. They can, you know, like, so I think looking at these platforms, not how people or brands are using them, but how the best is for you to use it, I think is a really interesting way. And that's the business right now. And, you know, like Lucas said, there's so much content out there and, you know, everybody's talking about the algorithms and things like that. Yes, the algorithms are strange. I don't think anybody understands them because it changes every day. But there's also a really, a, a really uh, concrete thing that's happening on socials right now, especially on Instagram, is that 30%. So when you scroll your feed now, every third post is usually an ad. So what Instagram did is now they took 30% of the content 
out of the mix and added it into ads. So what ends up happening is a, a platform like Instagram is hitting maturity. It's hitting a level that they're essentially pivoting. It looks to me like they're going to be kind of in the Pinterest space of things, a lot more e-com, we can, uh, a lot more selling, a lot more shops. You can see how they change the, the interface right now. Yeah, so, right now, a few, few days, a few different days ago. Yeah, <laughs> the whole thing, right? So, and this is where we need to look at these platforms. And, you know, there's a lot out there that not everybody's looking at. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to give everybody one uh, platform um, that is, uh, that not many people know about and uh, I think would really help. So there's an app uh, in the US and it is called, or in North America, and it's called Community. Now, what the Community app is, is an app that's actually a messaging app that's on your phone where you give people a number that you get, it's a personal number, and they can talk to you via their cell phones. Now, what you can do with that is you can have targeting in the back end of it. Everybody else just sees a regular message. But you have a database now, and you know what everybody's hobbies are, what they're interested in, and you can target different messages and say, hey, I'm going to be in New York this week, and you can target everybody in New York. You, you know, if you're doing something um, that's between, you know, like a, a 19 and 25 age, maybe perhaps it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an event and there's alcohol there, and, you know, you can't promote it to the, to the, to the younger people that are, that are signed on, you can send them the notification and very, very much target it. Now, the great thing about apps like that is that there is no gatekeeper. There are no ads. There's no feed. You're not competing. So the people that sign up really want to hear from you. And it doesn't have to be about services or selling products. It could, based on your brand and your brand identity, it could be a motivational quote that you send on Mondays. You know yeah. what I mean? And you, you can have the information of who wants to receive those. So you don't bother anybody on these platforms. It's not spamming messages for people to buy because they'll just get off of it. It's, 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 it's literally one click and it's done. But providing the value that, the, that your customers want and speaking in their language, um, like their communication language on all these platforms is so fundamental. So I always advise everyone to do their research and don't worry about how people are using it, right? Like LinkedIn was very much just posting, like posting jobs and stuff. Now it's a bit more like how Facebook used to be in like 2000 and like the, like the early 2000, like 2010, like 2006. Um, but it still has a business flair to it. So it's just interesting to watch how they evolve. And the way that they evolve is because users decide to take that platform and use it in a different way. And then yeah. it starts popping on. Um, yeah. So, okay. Now, that's that. We have a very, very special guest coming up right now, uh, Giovanni uh -huh. uh, Denisi. Um, he works as the marketing manager for a core luxury hotel sector um, across Italy, Spain, and Greece. Uh, with a focus of on, on identity development, event management, and market analysis, which is really interesting right now to have you on because the hotel industry has obviously been affected the most. Um, so first of all, Giovanni, thank you very much for joining us. Hello, Hello. everybody. And first of all, thanks for inviting me. And uh, thanks, uh, thanks to Yossi and thanks to Conscience and Co. And um, I listened to your, uh, your speech uh, before, Maria Cristina Yaselli too, and I completely agree with your, uh, uh, your talks and your uh, strategy. And um, I can say, uh, as you know, the tourism is uh, one of the most affected uh, market by pandemic. So now we are going to find the right way to, to communicate, to promote and to uh, to wait to the people when they can start to travel again. And um, as you told before, uh, now the brands are the possibility to choose in different uh, platforms, different social media platforms. So uh, brands can choose their uh, right platform depending or uh, of uh, the target, depending the message, depending the, uh, the content that the platform can spread. So, and um, during the pandemic, uh, we, uh, in the beginning, uh, we stopped all campaigns, we stopped all communication because people was afraid. And uh, it was not good to communicate and to invite them to travel, of course, because uh, it's banned to travel. And, uh, but, uh, yeah. but after a few days, we understand that uh, the social media were the best way to to maintain the conversation with our with our guests with our targets because uh, uh, they start to ask us uh, about um, the the closing 
uh, hotel, about the reopening, and of course, about the refunds of the stay. So the, the social media was a, a perfect uh, a channel to communicate directly with, uh, with, um, with our guests. And uh, I suppose that uh, um, uh, the, the, the Instagram, for instance, is one of the best way to communicate. Uh, uh, for uh, with uh, especially with luxury brands because um, remember uh, hotels uh, don't sell a, a real product you can take home you can buy and take home we sell an experience so we need to to maintain a special relationship with our guests with our target and uh, social media is compliant with this focus with these goals I think, I think. right yeah Right. It's, it's really interesting because obviously, you know, the hotel industry is um, a massive industry and we're all very excited to start traveling soon, hopefully again. Um, but um, it's interesting that you say how important social media was to you right now as a, as a hotel brand and how you figured out to create a strategy that is still maintaining the, the, customer, um, the customer journey, the, the customer relationship. So that actually brings me to the first question for you. And I wanted to ask you, like, you know, uh, talk, like, aside from the, the, the point end where I ask a question and you answer it on social media, let's talk about that journey. Like, what is the importance, um, you know, in general or specifically for you, um, what is the importance about social media right now within the customer journey, not just the touch point? Yeah, um, when we talk about uh, hotels customer journey, we talk about uh, five steps journey. Uh, I mean, uh, in the beginning, we talk about inspiration, then research. Uh, people need to, uh, to find uh, uh, an inspiration for the next travel, for the stay, for the destination. And uh, the second step is uh, research. What I mean, uh, research is when uh, people find uh, information about cost, about uh, travel, about uh, uh, flight, about uh, uh, what they can visit in the destination. The third step, the third step is booking. Uh, so we, we have the, the, the customer on our website or booking.com or what else, but uh, at the end they book and uh, the stay, of course, and post stay. Uh, along this journey, we can find uh, different touch points. Uh, touch points are the, the points where we can uh, uh, influence the customer, the, we can touch, and so we can, uh, we can um, uh, influence their choice. And uh, uh, social media uh, for uh, tourism and for hotel chains, brands are very important because uh, we can create a very uh, important touch points when we can to influence the people. And uh, for instance, uh, when, I, when, I, when I think uh, an important touch points, uh, if uh, uh, Instagram, just because uh, we talk about it, uh, Instagram is an important touch point in this decision, in this customer journey, because um, customer can uh, take inspiration by the influencer post, by a friend's post, by advertorial post, of course, uh, because uh, you know, uh, Instagram uh, now uh, allow, allow to, to use uh, advertorial, to use uh, Instagram uh, stories with, uh, with Whip Up. So it's a very integrated uh, tools that uh, uh, um, brands can use to promote an experience in this case, of course. And uh, as I told before, luxury hotels uh, uh, are more uh, impacted about this uh, because when we talk about luxury, we talk about sometimes about uh, Porsche, sometimes about uh, like uh, something of a very special, something that we, we dreams with a luxury, uh, luxury experience. So. I think uh, is um, the customer journey. In the customer journey, social media are uh, one of the most important touch points. Yeah. Right. So, um, so a question for. Oh, sorry, Luca, please. No, no, no. It is just to. It, it, it's interesting because um, this union of um, online and offline experience is always something that. Um, one of our participants asked in uh, in the question. So, uh, and it's yeah, I noticed that. I'm looking at the questions I was going to ask him, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, that one's no, answered. No, no. That so one's answered. Just, <laughs> it's something that we are going to we are going to talk uh, later. But 
the, the fidgetal, the fidgetal experience. Now, what it's called fidgetal, so the mix of physical, physical and digital. Yeah. It's something very, very important, and it's not something so abstract like uh, it may seem. Uh, with the word digital, it's something very concrete. And uh, for example, in the user experience, in, in the user journey, uh, for example, for a, a brand like yours, that it's an hotelery brand, I mean, more brands, um, it's something that it's digital because there are a, 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 an online experience, but also an offline experience. And the two things are talking together at the same time yeah, yeah it's interesting yeah yeah um so just to continue this same conversation here um because we're talking about you know the customer journey we're also talking about social media being really really vital um so i you, we, you've touched on how instagram is a really great place for you right now um obviously you know brands can live on social media in a lot of different ways um, I guess what my question would be as a, as, a, as a brand, as a hotel who is, you know, um, representing for, in your case, the luxury brand experience, um, like what type of content uh, are, is working best for Acor at the moment? And my question is like, did, did, did you have to change your marketing strategy before and after, or has it always just been about selling luxury, selling the experience, selling the emotion? Yeah, and um, to answer your question, I start uh, from your second question, um, the strategy. Yes, we changed something because uh, in this period, uh, we understand that people, uh, first of all, needs to be ensured. So um, we, we talk about our uh, safety protocol, for instance, because uh, brands like, uh, I mean, uh, M Gallery or Sofitel or Pullman, very luxury uh, brands hotel, uh, needs to uh, ensure their guests that they can stay in their hotels in completely safety. Uh, and in this case, I'm proud to say that Accor, for instance, uh, uh, developed an, in, an additional internal protocol, uh, something called call it all safe. But the point is that uh, uh, we start to ensure them and after, we, um, we create a dedicated campaign uh, to spread the positive vibes because we call this, this campaign uh, Reignite the Love to Travel. So, uh, okay, we, <laughs> we promote our, our hotels, of course, but uh, we spread a, a good vibes because people need good vibes in this period to fight this virus, to fight this uh, a very depressing situation. And uh, so, uh, and we decided to, to talk uh, uh, about the hotels more than the brand. Uh, I mean, uh, the brand is important, but people don't, uh, don't care about uh, fake uh, communication or too much promotional communication. They are interesting uh, uh, if they have to, to, to travel, they need to, to, to know the hotel, the service. And so we talk about this. And so you mean that you, you mean that brand is important, but just selling people every second you get isn't the right thing to do. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, yeah, because uh, I can, I can, okay, I can uh, imagine a brand advertising uh, spot, but maybe people don't, uh, don't, don't, uh, uh, don't be care about this because uh, for them in this moment, the focus is uh, on my care, on my wellness and on my family. And if I have to travel, I need the essential information. And mm -hmm. that's, it's such a good, it's such a great point. Like, you know, and uh, just to, just to continue on to what you're saying right now, um, just to talk to everybody about brand and communication. This is the big question that I ask a lot of companies that I work with. If you take your product out of the conversation, what are you saying? What content are you sharing? And a lot of big companies too, they struggle. They go, well, what do you mean? I, it, we're a product. If we're not selling you a product, then what do we have? But Giovanni, if I understand you correctly, what you're saying is, you know your brand so well that you know the emotional touch points. You know what is creating value for the people that stay at your hotels because you've had that mapped out. So having such a strong brand for you, it sounds like it's it's easy to not just focus on selling, but actually focus on what your what your customers care about when they're not in your hotels, like making them feel good, their their wellness, their safety. You know, 
And I, I think that I just wanted to, to focus on that just because I want people to understand that it's social media, yes. Obviously you wanna sell stuff, that's why we have businesses, but that's not the whole point of social media. You know, marketing is in sales, they're kind of combined, but marketing is that long brand conversation so that when you're making them feel good now, when the world opens up, everyone says, oh wow, like they weren't selling me every chance they got, they actually made me feel really good at a time where I was sad that I couldn't travel, but they made me look forward to it and they made me feel better about myself which when we move out of this is just going to end up being so great. So I think that the strategy that you're talking about is really great. And I just, I want to just stop you for one second to add that uh, because I think a lot of brands and businesses get really confused between selling and branded marketing. Yeah. Yeah, completely. And uh, to ask whether your second question about the content, um, just to, to, to come back to my first uh, uh, my first thing is, uh, I think Instagram for actually for the moment is one of the best platform because uh, we can use uh, the tools the uh, they use the imaging video uh, is a platform that generates a very higher engagement rate uh, than the other platforms. And then this is uh, very important for us because uh, engagement rate is uh, the uh, is the line with, we we can check uh, the involve the, the engagement with our guests. And uh, you remember that uh, now 100 uh, people, uh, 100 million of people use Instagram. So I think that the next step uh, can be uh, to use um, uh, the integrate platform as the, you know, the doing uh, platform, Chinese platform, where is an integrate platform. I mean, you can use this uh, app to share your content, your video, but user uh, can uh, just tapping on the on the screen can uh, linking on the widget booking uh, booking widget of Jetel. So if I engage an influencer uh, and uh, he posts um, a video uh, inside my hotel, one of my hotel, uh, user can just tapping the, on the screen can uh, book. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, that that opens up the type of content you can create, right? That's really interesting. Yeah. Yes, so I think that it's the platform I was talking to you, Yossi, yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's interesting. I want everyone to listen to the Chinese name. <laughs> like, you know what? I want, to, I, I want everyone to listen to, yeah, sorry, go on. Doing is called doing. Doing, yeah. Yeah, so something that you mentioned that I, I found really fascinating is that, you know, if everybody just listened, like, this isn't just putting a post or sharing an advertisement and then clicking, which then takes you to the shop, which then you go through it. You know, we're talking about new platforms emerging. So imagine if you were watching TV and you saw a commercial and you could just click the commercial and yeah. all of a sudden you're buying the product. This yeah. isn't just a real or, so that's really interesting. I really think that's really interesting. Yeah. That platform, because Johnny, I've seen that, pl that platform a few days ago um on uh, on a tv on, on a tv Ooh. program and i didn't remember the name and it was crazy because it was so easy there was so many people influencers but also not influencers and it was so easy because you were watching your screen and seeing people selling everything because a, a girl was selling a rocket but not yeah. a rocket a to the moon it's an actual rocket, like a, like a rocket rocket. And yes, he managed to sell a rocket. And, and it was incredible because it was so easy. Click and you Amazing. buy everything. Amazing. Um, so, okay, so uh, we have to get going, Giovanni. Um, we have uh, about a half an hour left. I want to make sure we get some more questions and get to our next guest. Um, but thank you so, so much um, for joining us. Uh, really, your time is very interesting. Um, yeah, and is there is there anywhere that uh, aside from LinkedIn, um, is there anywhere that uh, maybe people can can find you or find the the, the hotel chain? And uh... yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn, Giovanni Denisi, or uh, Instagram, Gianni Den. But LinkedIn is better, I suppose, for uh, business uh, uh, travel. So I I can uh, answer your question, of course. And, and the brand is Accor, and, and the, 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 the specific brands are M, M Gallery and Pullman, uh, yeah. that are the, the best choice. 
I yeah. wait you on my I wait you on for on my hotels. <laughs> I can't wait. Trust me. The second that, that this opens up, I'm on. I'm at all your hotels, not just one. I promise. I uh, have experience. Me, me and Michele, we have experienced two yeah. of them in, in the past years, and it was an experience. An experience. So. <laughs> Thank you so much, and, uh, and we'll we'll talk to you soon. You have a, a beautiful day. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Um, all right. Well, that was a really interesting conversation because it's such a part of the market that's really suffering, right? Like we're not looking at stuff that is so easy to be bought on social media and trying to sell, sell, sell. You know, this is a company, hotel companies are a company that need to really focus on brand right now and their social communication strategy because they need to be able to, 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 to still create that momentum so that when the world opens up, their brand is stronger than before, not weaker. And uh, yeah. so I really appreciate Giovanni uh, coming up, uh, coming yeah. up on here. Yeah. Um, Very important but, also about um, so many questions they they sent the participants is about the, 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 the kind of content they have to post on on social yeah. media. So uh, Gianni uh, showed uh, an example of how um, an industry, uh, the hotel industry, so um so hit by the pandemic uh, is reacting and what kind of contents they are now uh, um, de deciding to put on their social media especially on instagram um, and it's quite interesting because they don't talk all or only about the brand they are talking about the specific hotels the specific experiences um, the customer can live in that in that hotels, yeah. and they also um, create contents about lifestyle, about contents, about the pleasure of traveling, and it's something is especially on, on Instagram very 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 strong, a very strong topic. Yeah. Because a lot of uh, Instagrammers follow Instagram, uh, they are on Instagram for uh, travels, for you know, it's kind of uh, a bit of escapism almost, right? Like I think that the one of the big things that uh, that that uh, Giovanni really touched on was the fact that you know, it's it's not just about product. You really need to know, excuse me, your brand, and you need to know how that emotionally affects people. You know, I say it a lot now. You know brands are this generation's religion you know where the, everyone a lot of people are moving away from religion but everyone's still looking for 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 something to connect to so the brands that are making the most impact are really aligning with people's life values um you know the, the cultures that they that, that they're a part of i don't mean just uh you know like um uh um um geographical uh, culture. I mean, like, you know, the things that you like doing, the places that you go, the things that you experience, you know, your music culture, yeah. your food culture. Yeah. Like, and so I think that, you know, where a lot of brands have really struggled over this last little time is because they don't know it enough. You know, the market was big and everybody was spending money. And if you had some cool logos and some fun photos, it didn't matter. But now yeah. all of a sudden when it does matter and nobody's buying, they go, well, what do we do now? And then that's what Giovanni said. It's like, you have to make sure that you don't go and, and make it like fake, like, you know, like pretend that you, that you care. You can't be, you can't focus only on selling and then pretend like you care about other people because what will happen is chances are when it's selling time again, you're going to go back to selling and people are going to see that you're full of shit. Um, yeah. And that's a really, really strong point. So, um, yeah, and it's interesting that Yossi, both uh, Maria Cristina and Gianni put the attention on the values of the brand. It can be a brand, it can be an agency, it can be uh, a professional. I mean, but we have to, we all have to be more focused um, on the values um, because being um being uh, knowing exactly what the values are of a brand it means that we can also have um specific we, we can um find a specific target we can find uh, consequently specific contents to satisfy the needs of that uh, of that target so all the things are connected together 
Yeah. Um, yeah. And- 100%. 100%. I, I think that, uh, you know, the big take for sure right now, before we move on to uh, our next guest is that, you know, when I work with a lot of uh, businesses and brands and, and different companies, um, you know, it, it's, it's a weird thing to say, but like your product and your service is the last thing people actually care about. Now, that's why brand is so important. Now, let me clarify that by saying when you finally get someone to stay at your hotel or buy your, 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 your clothing or buy your food, it still needs to be great. And it needs to be at a good quality level where the marketing connects with the final result of it that makes me a continual customer. But before they even try your product or you actually get like, you need to get my attention and you need to get my attention in a way where I don't, where, where it resonates with me, where I don't feel like you're selling, but you're providing so much value on top of what you're selling that now you have me engage with you. And while we were saying before, engaging in different ways on different platforms also allows your audience to engage with you in different ways, which creates a lot of data for businesses. Because if you're only talking about Instagram, everyone's mentality is, inst- when I'm on Instagram, my, 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 my mentality, my communication mentality is Instagram. So I'm speaking like I speak on Instagram. But the second that I go to another platform like LinkedIn, all of a sudden I'm having, I'm saying different things. I'm using different words. I'm reacting to you different, whether that's TikTok, whether that's, you know, you yeah. name the platform. And so I think that that's what's really, really important now in terms of social media and really going past what a lot of these other brands are doing. You know, like we scroll and if you're selling us stuff, we just don't care. But if you get my attention and, and, and I get it, it's, it's a very different um, customer journey towards that purchase. And then hopefully, yeah. you know, like it'll, it'll progress it. Now, the interesting thing about social media is that it's going to expose your brand. So social media is great if also your product is great. If your product isn't good, then social media is just going to expedite the process of people realizing that your company's full of shit. So it's really important to know what your foundations are, know what your cultures and brands are, and build a strong, strong business. So, all right, now our next guest is Naomi Eisted. Uh, she's an international fashion and beauty television presenter, entrepreneur, author, lifestyle influencer, and, uh, and, and content creator. Um, Naomi has been featured on some of the biggest platforms in the world, um, and we're really excited to have her. We know influencers is something that a lot of businesses and brands are reaching out to, and uh, she's one of the best. So let's introduce you, Naomi Isted. Um, if you're there, you can turn on your uh, video and your... Hello. Hi, guys, and hello to everybody. Lovely hello, to Naomi. Both tonight. Thank you, Luca, and thank you, Yossi, for having me this evening. I've been listening to everything that you've been saying, and it's so refreshing to hear this perspective. From my perspective, creating the content for whether it's TV or magazines or social media, um, I think this is brilliant what you're doing because more brands need this understanding. And it's kind of like my brain while I've been listening is going ping, 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 ping. I need to say this, I need to say that. So you need to tell me to be quiet, guys. <laughs> very encouraging. It's very encouraging. Sorry, Yossi. It's very encouraging what you are saying because uh, when we decided to do this first panel discussion about brand therapy, um, we we decided to have uh, different. We had the chance to have different guests, and and we thank you uh, from the, the 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 very deep of my heart of our heart because we uh, had the chance to have a very different kinds of guests because. Yeah. You are a content creator also, uh, but we also have uh, manager. We had managers from yep. very big brands. So the other side, <laughs> the okay. other side of the of the communication, yeah. um, and so it, it's very interesting also to uh, to have you also because the the influencers topic is very uh, is very. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting. Like everyone, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the, inf- the, so what's really great about having you as our final guest, and, and we, we did this on purpose, is because we, you know, we're talking about brand and brand values and, you know, social media platforms throughout this whole talk. And obviously, as an, imp- I mean, you do a million things. You're just amazing. I, I love you to death. Oh, um, thank you. And thank you for the beautiful introduction as well. That was really, really kind of you. <laughs> yeah, I think I wanted to read that context because now we're getting into, you know, as an influencer, you know, this is, this is pretty much where 
you know, the brand and the communications, you know, and, and that, that lifestyle, that kind of approach to culture and values. I mean, yeah. influencers are meant to embody that. And mm -hmm. obviously you're, you influence a lot of different um, niches and, 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 uh, and, and different parts of the market, um, which is amazing. So why don't we just talk a little bit about that in terms of, um, you know, let's just kind of get the ball going and talk about your experience as an influencer, you know, how you've seen it change since you started. Um, and let's, let's get the conversation going with you. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to start with the phrase influencer. Cut that out. No, <laughs> I, I, I've been creating content for 20 years. And I think sometimes that is a key thing for a brand to think about when they want to work. Sorry if I go off tangent as well, which I will do. Um, but I think when you're looking to work with brands, look to work with um, creators that understand your vision. That's what I wanted to sort of throw in there from the conversations you guys were having earlier on, is I think it's really important that you pick the right people that represent the demographic that you're trying to target and also understand your vision. Because I think my background is a broadcast journalist. Then obviously I progressed with the times and digital and media, it evolves. It's constantly evolving. And we're kind of like, oh, gotta keep up, gotta keep up, you know? And so obviously for brands, they're in the same position that that's not what they do. They've got their brand, but they have to keep up with their marketing and their media and their digital strategy. And that's, that's you know, it is difficult. Um, so that's where obviously people like all of us come into the equation and are there to sort of help brands and assist them grow. Um, but it is a very confusing arena. I mean, in the last, I sort of, um, I think I started out on Instagram because my background is TV and writing. So I started out on Instagram probably about eight years ago. And the difference now to then is phenomenal. I mean, my main thing was like Twitter and then Facebook and then Instagram. And I think um, you've also got to look at the different boxes, like you were saying about the different social channels. I think you've got to be careful to work with someone that's only on a certain platform because then that is a very, very um, diluted potentially following so I think if you've got someone that's got quite a really great presence on Instagram but also they've maybe got an amazing YouTube fantastic um, and I also think that when it comes to sorry I'm getting carried away obviously no no no, no, no. <laughs> it's great it's great it's great I, I love this I think it's also really important to think about what you're looking to gain from your content um, from a consumer's perspective. So if you are like a toy brand, then TikTok or YouTube with young YouTubers is amazing. Instagram's not necessarily gonna really work for you. Whereas if you're a travel company, yes, Twitter, um, Instagram. And I think like you said, picking the right social channels more than just the influencer or the content creator is crucial before you even start looking for people to work with you on your campaigns. A great, yeah, um, but, a great but yeah, definitely the main thing that I've seen the difference is brands used to spend massive budgets on TV. It was all TV advertising, TV commercials. And like you said, now they can spend budget on content creators who have a following, a really good following. And actually you can even have like, with the, high, with the swipe ups, they can be swiping right up to the product. So if it's clothing or if it's um, furniture, interiors, influencers. So, and I think it's also really important to have a look at uh, who you wanna work with and really do your research on that influencer. So not just go, okay, we want, five women that are mum bloggers because five women that are mum bloggers can be totally different and one could be really really positive and one could be really negative and their output output could be completely different um so I think it's really taking a step back and going okay which platform suits our brand oh perfect let's work with those which types of people are right for our demographic if, for example, a fast fashion brand approaches me, I don't work with them. Sorry if we've got any fast fashion, fast fashion brands, because personally, that's not going to relate to sales for them. It's not relative to my lifestyle. I don't wear fast fashion. Right. I, would, so I would buy high street and luxury, luxury. And, and, and independent. Um, and so for me, um, I think if so, and I turn down quite a lot of campaigns I do because I just think it has to be authentic to my lifestyle you know yeah, your audience will see right through it right like they'll call bullshit and then you're, you're gonna lose all of your clout right because exactly. they're like oh she's trying to sell me I think that you know one of the, the things that I've noticed the most with influencers is that you know find, like you said and it's such a great point is that find an influencer that embodies your company values because then the content they create is going to be organic 
where they're odd, like when they, when the the, the, the yes. content creator, or the influencer, like when they when their audience sees the content, it's gonna make sense. It's not gonna feel like it's an actual. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something yeah. you do personally very well. And I think oh, thank you. again, uh, speaking about values, because I think that as Naomi said, uh, it's very important for an influencer and a brand to share the same values. Otherwise, the yeah. communication is fake, like like Gianni, Gianni said before. Uh, so it's very important not for a brand, for a company, um, not to be guided only by the number of followers or... You know, said. Yeah. So now, okay, so... so I, I've said this, sorry to cut in, your but no, I've said this to brands a million times. I've said to them, you know, don't look necessarily at, uh, if you're a luxury brand, don't look at a reality TV star with 2 million followers because their followers are probably about 10 or 12 or 14 years old. Whereas you might have someone with a, a smaller following, but a, quali a quality that they will like, Wealthy school mums. If you if you've got Chanel, for example, wealthy school mums are going to buy Chanel makeup. You're not going to sell Chanel Chanel makeup with a twenty year twenty year old reality star whose fan base is twelve or fourteen year olds. You know, yeah. and I think that's really crucial not to be. Oh, look, they've got 10 million followers or two million followers. They may do, but they also may treat you like a number and not as oh my gosh, I'm passionate about this campaign. And I think passion has also got to be in there as well. So if it's a bigger campaign, so a lot of like um, listening to Giovanni was brilliant um, because I work with a lot of travel clients and I have done for years, the luxury sector. And again, where I've been approached by maybe kind of the 18 to 21 type of brands around the world, I've said, and even if the budget's good, I'll say, no guys, listen, it's not right for me. I'm luxury family travel that fits my box, that will it relate to sales for you. Um, and there's no point in working with me. I, no. I don't, you know, it's and I think that's really, really important to work with people that you think, yeah, actually they're on brand. Yeah, and I think that's a good point that you also mentioned in terms of, you know, a lot of people look at uh, followers and, you know, before, when they're choosing their influencer, they just go straight to the number. And they're like, yeah. oh, well, you know, and like you said, the, the problem with that is that now you're not necessarily paying for the influencer. You think that you're paying for their reach because they have all this clout. But if the, if the, if the product doesn't fit, well, then all of that clout is just going to dissipate because everybody that's watching you isn't going to be about that. Um, something else that you mentioned really good is interesting is that, you know, along the lines of using influencers, you know, any, we're pretty much all influencers to one form or another. Not, not everyone can make money doing that but we're all somewhat influencing. And it's like, you know, if you're a local hot dog stand, for example, then, you know, getting a macro uh, or a micro follower that has, you know, like it's a soccer mom and, you know, she, you know, you, you set something up with, with them and they only have 500 uh, followers, but you're this hot dog stand that they, you know, they take all their kids to that hot dog stand after soccer practice or after games. Well, yeah. that's, that's going to create business for you. It's not about, the you know it's about converting and i think that that's important um yes. so okay. what one really great question i think is going to really help a lot of people and create a lot of value here um is you know what are the right ways and what are the wrong ways to work with an influencer like you know let's say that i find you i have a great product it's mm -hmm. on brand with you it hits all your values and then we start the actual relationship what are the, what are some of the right way like best best practices and what are some things that people really need to stop doing? The big question now. The big. So everyone now is writing, is noting. What going to say. Oh well, firstly, I know I'm I, sorry, I'm brutal, but I think I I really do think that you've got to think about don't do these one take wonders. I really think that you've got to look at longevity. So any relationship I personally get into with a brand, I don't really want to get in with, into a relationship with a brand if it's going to be just like one random post. I don't think that's going to be helpful to the brand. I don't think that's helpful to me. I don't think my following would find that engaging or authentic. I think you should look at longer term strategies with the right people rather than having 40 different people to work with, actually narrow it down to maybe five or 10 that you can either be in a position where you're working with them every month or you're working with them every quarter and you know that they're on brand for you. So um, I tend to love working with brands that, first of all, when a brand comes to me, my first question is, 
does it fit my lifestyle? Oh, yes. I wear those coats, that style of that style of brand. Yes, 100%. Or my children would use that. 100%. So if I think, first of all, it fits with my lifestyle, that's it. That's a tick. And then secondly, if a brand says, you know, we want to do one post with you, I'll say, do you know what, I, you know, thanks so much, but I really don't think that that's going to benefit either of us in the long term. So and I think it's also sure. you want to work with people that um, I want to work with brands that want to brainstorm together. So it's not a case of I've got an idea or you've got an idea. It's a case of we build, uh, uh, we brainstorm the campaign together. So of course, a big, you know, a massive big retailer um, that I work with, they will say, right, this is roughly, you know, this is the theme for these different times of the year. What are your thoughts? That is just beautiful because it's a creative relationship where you can say, well, actually, guys, I think blah, blah, blah would work really well. And they hadn't thought of that. And I also think it's very important to kind of get a, uh, I think it's really important to know that you're working with someone that likes to work with a brief. So however, even if a client wants the campaign to be quite very authentic and organic, you still as, a, as an influencer or a content creator need to have an idea of what the brand's vision is because an influencer's idea and a marketing director's idea could be completely different. So you could be talking about creating a recipe um, video series, for example, but the style in the in the mindset of the YouTuber and the Instagram, their our brains work completely differently. So I don't I don't fit in the YouTube space because I'm more of a broadcast journalist. So when I create video content, it's much more, you know, old, old school BBC, entertaining, informative, um, and you know, subliminally educational. If that that's a travel brand or you know, if right. it's a educational brand, that kind of thing. So right. I think um, if you if you wanted like a really factual video then you'd run that by a youtuber if you're thinking of working with a youtuber you have to run that brief by them because they could go wait a minute that's not my style so i think um i i love it when a client has a brief and when a client doesn't have a brief it makes me so nervous okay so you like, yeah so sorry no, so, I'm so when it comes to that, I'm so OCD because I want I want the client to be so happy when I've created a video series or if I've created uh, I've shot like loads of different looks for a fashion brand. I want to I want to to please that brand and know that we're working and you know we're right on the same synergy. Our mindsets right. are working in parallel. Um, so and here's, so, here's, so here's my question. Sorry to cut you off. Um, I just want to make right. sure, because it's something you said. And I just want to make sure that we don't lose that. Um, talking about how you work with these brands and how you select them now. You said you like working with briefs. Now, do you like working with briefs that tell you exactly what to do and how to do it? Or you just like letting them tell you roughly what they're trying to get and just let you have yeah. fun with it? Yeah. So the way that I like to work with all brands is we'll have a rough brief exactly like that. So we'll have a rough brief that then I'll have a vision and then I'll talk to them about my creative vision. And I'll say, look, guys, that's what you're talking about. Now, this is what I'm thinking. And if it's kind of like partially a script, scripted style content, I will run a rough script by them because there's nothing worse for a content creator um, to then have to re-edit something five or ten times when the budget isn't relative to that. And you really want to know that you've ticked off all the boxes. And I don't know, I definitely don't want it to be like, this is a brief and you've got to follow it word for word. No, that's not that's not creatively authentic. But I think um, I think if they give you a, like a rough brief, you go to and back, to and forth, and then you say, right, I'm shooting the content on Monday. Um, if you've got any changes before then, please let me know. I think that makes for a beautiful relationship between a brand and a content creator. So you go, so you go, so you look at it and you go full, uh, and you go full collaboration mode, even though it's a client that's yeah. paying you, you're yeah. still very much like, listen, I understand it. We're both on the same page. We know that this is going to work, but yeah. from here until we actually execute, let's make this a collaboration, not like a, you know, yes and no kind of yeah. So mm -hmm. I think a collaboration with an influencer as opposed to just paying them and then just closing your eyes on it is probably the best way. Definitely, definitely. Um, because I've put, you know, I have, I have heard horror stories of uh, maybe if you do have um, influencers that haven't maybe had any media training or background, that's where they'll, it will be a gray area. And for a brand, it will be a nightmare because they'll just be going to and from, to and from. They'll shoot the content. The brand doesn't like it. They'll shoot it. They'll shoot it. And that's why I think if, if an influencer or a content creator doesn't want to work to a brief, then you maybe need to say this. I don't know if this person's right 
for me because then you you could be signed into a contract to pay them to deliver content for you and they're not delivering you know the vision obviously it's not necessarily and sometimes as a brand guys you've got to be open to the creatives <laughs> because you may want to get your messaging 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 in there and that will turn everybody off on social media on instagram if it's like this is an advert this is an advert this da da da, da people aren't interested. It has to be subliminal. It has to be creative. Yeah. And the more creative, the better, to be honest, because then yeah, when it's the authentic. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think that some of the best, uh, oh, sorry, Luca, go. No, sorry, I, I was saying there are very good suggestions for everyone, also for also for me, also for uh, for my agency, because uh, because it, it's quite, it's quite, um, strange Naomi but um, also for an agency like mine and I, I think also for for Yossi um, it's better when you have a client that is coming to you yeah. and of course he has a brief mm -hmm. uh, but it's always better also for us not only creating a specific communication action or a specific event. Also for us as an agency, it's more uh, challenging and intriguing uh, sharing with the client his communication plans, his communication strategy, knows yeah. about the communication strategy, also the marketing strategy, if it's possible, of the client in order to create a better Campaign. communication action or communication plan or a better yeah. event because yeah. also for us it's very sometimes is it's quite sad okay you have to do that you have to I know. yeah uh, exactly mm -hmm. and and the thing is uh, the brands are paying us to do what we're really good at so i think brands need to be able to be open to the conversation and the discussion that i i, I have said it quite a few times to, to my clients and then they appreciate it in the long run i'll say guys that's horrendous. No, that's not going to work. <laughs> and they're like, well, but this is what our plan is. And I'm like, but you, that can be your plan. But if you exit, if we execute this, you're not going to get any engagement. Like, yeah. but trust me. Yeah. Um, and it's really hard for uh, corporate sides of a business to understand. Like, the, I've had it so many times, even when I've been doing like radio for um, brands and I've been representing them on radio days and they'll have their messaging. And I'm like, Guys, honestly, if we use too much of this messaging, it is just going to, like, the listeners uh, will get cut off the radio. <laughs> We're not going to be allowed to continue because it will just be like, this is an advert. Um, because, you know, what I'm hearing is that as an influencer, you're, you also bring such, a, such an important level of, uh, of market research, right? Because, you know, you're actually seeing all the reports and, you know, you're, you're kind of a part, you're kind of like a part of the business, in, in, like a part of that company in a sense, because... And then you have so much as a, as, as a content creator and influencer, you know, you have so much data that mm. you can then take to better your message with your next client. And, you know, I think that that's really interesting that the, you know, to, a good point for a lot of people, if they want to work with influencers and content creators is that, you know, don't just trust them based on what they do, but trust them based on what they know, because they're seeing the numbers, they're showing the reports to their clients. Like they know what works and what doesn't way better than a lot of these brands who are just starting out trying to find the best person and then being scared about what to do. So I think that that adds a level of, 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 of ease when you work with somebody at, at your level um, that, uh, that really understands the market, not just the, not just the game. Yeah, I, I, I do agree with you. I think and so that is hard to express to brands, but the value in working with, say, for example, people like myself and similar contemporaries that are like myself that maybe have a background as well in either editorial or TV, we, we maybe think more out of the box. And so we can understand when a client's coming to us with a brief, we think, I, I think multifaceted. So if a client comes to me, I don't just think, oh, and like I'm going to shoot this on Instagram. I think, wait a minute, that brand, you know, we could be doing stuff on a podcast. We could be doing like a video series. We could be pitching that to Netflix. We could be doing da 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 da. And I think it's really good if brands can invest in the right talent and they do a bit of research rather than just going, boom, let's do a massive influencer campaign. I would say hold back and actually find like four or five key people and maybe in, you know, really different personalities, but that represent your brand in different ways. I think that's, I think that's really, really powerful because, uh, you know, 
um, for me, for example, if a, it, you know, if a client's got a, a great message and we're doing like a video series um, and I tend to do a lot of video series, a lot of travel video series, and we will we'll do the video series, but then I'll also say, you know, like, and then in two months time, we can put those videos on my online, you know, online magazine. And then also if you need that to be edited to a podcast, blah, 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 you know, I think it's just really good to have these conversations to see, uh, if someone is literally just going to take pictures for you, then, you know, that's fine. You know exactly that that's what they're going to do. They're going to shoot content for you that is solely pictures. And that's fantastic because there is a place for that as well. And then there's also, you know, I think I think it's just really understanding the, the right sphere for your brand. It's it's crucial before you approach anyone to work with anybody. Well, I mean, so, and, it's, yeah, it's, and you actually bring up a, a, an interesting, uh, you know, uh, we're, 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 we'll start wrapping this up in a moment because we know you're busy and, and you have families and I really appreciate your time today. I'm um, enjoying it. <laughs> but no, it's awesome. It's like, you know, I, I think that- I think a good glass of red wine and then I'll be fine. <laughs> I know, I was gonna say like, so you know, I think that it's really interesting, um, the space that you're really talking about, and we haven't really touched in on every platform, but you mentioned Spotify, um, you know, or po podcasts. And, yeah. uh, you know, just, to, just goes to show that, you know, every conversation we're having with different people that are, you know, pretty high up in, the, in their respective fields, especially today during our guests, you know, everyone's talking about different platforms. And I think that that is something that I've noticed a lot where, you know, people know what their niche is. They know the different platforms out there. You're not going to have one conversation that's going to be the same for every single person. And so, mm -hmm. you know, talking about podcasts, we haven't had a chance to, but, you know, that's really, really great too, especially as somebody who has as much clout as you, you know, there's a lot of advertising going on on uh on podcasts right now as well like a quick little like intro message to introduce like so for example if you're um if, you, if you're working with a brand you can do a quick little like intro bit about them yeah and introduce your podcast and then i also know some people who actually don't do the uh the, the advertisement until the middle so yeah. they don't distract at the beginning and so there's 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 so much there and and, and you know really really appreciate it it's really interesting because um you answered I mean, I asked you one question, but you, you were so thorough. Like, you know, literally, was, how do you do best partnerships? What are the, you know what I mean? Like, um, how's it changed? The misconceptions people have. Um, yeah. And so, you know, I, it, it, unless there's anything else, uh, one last thing you want to share. Um, I, um, I, I just think that um, now is the time to be on social media. You have to utilize it, guys. So look for the right platforms, look for the right people and get on it now because th this time now, obviously things are going, like I used to pitch TV series after TV series to networks. Now it's pitching digital broadcast series. Everything's changing, everything's evolving, but stick with the platforms that are right for you and your brand. If you're uh, you know, a luxury furniture brand, don't be hanging out on TikTok. I just don't think it's necessary, for example. <laughs> And that's what and that's what it says, yeah. And and Yossi and Naomi, I, I would like to uh, to finish your to end up this your your speech and your um, your discussion with a, with a question that we have from mm -hmm. from one of the, from one of the participants that asked um, how influencers or content creators are paid normally. And I, I would I would like to to answer to this question that it's like to ask how much a car costs. Uh, it depends exactly. on the model, the brand, the accessories, the yeah. performances that are required. Uh, so um, it depends on. The, it, it depends on your experience. It depends on the level of platforms you've got. It depends on. Um, you know, it, I, I tend to, for example, if someone's going to ask me about, you know, when you're paying for influencers, that's why I like to work with longer campaigns, because actually I think that's more effective for brands. So instead of just paying for one off posts, I think plan a budget in your mind as a brand. So if you want to spend five grand or 20 grand or 100 grand, think to yourself, OK, I'll, you know, who am I going to work with and how can I utilize the most content from that person and who are the right people. I think that would be my suggestion when it comes to uh, budgets and that kind of side of it. Yeah, totally. And just one last thing to ask before we say farewell on this one is that, you know, don't, I think what a lot of people get a little bit intimidated by when they're working with influencers and content creators 
is that they assume that they all know what they're doing. And yeah. so, you know, I, what my advice is for a lot of people when they want to work with influencers, you know, I'm like, listen, you don't know what you can afford and what you can't unless you ask 10 people in the space, because mm -hmm. once you, if you talk, if you go to the top people that you know are doing the best and you, you know, you send them off a message and you get two replies or one reply yeah. and you just say, oh, that one influencer responded to me and they said, this is their rate. So that's what it's going to be at that level. That's I it. recommend saying no, like go that's to five or 10 ask all, I mean, at the same level, at whatever level, like, you know, do the millions, do the hundred thousands, do the 10 thousands, mm -hmm. you know, send five to 10 messages off to each one of the people that you want to work with. And then that way you can look at the, 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 uh, the responses you get and then say, oh, there's an average here. Or, oh, there's a trend yeah. here. Oh, actually it is kind of the same. Um, yeah. You know, the, 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 this type of space is so new. And I think that there's a lot of room there um, for people not to be so intimidated to approach influencers, but to actually get some information and, and to really understand who you're working with, what they want. If it's worth it for you right now, maybe it's worth it for you, you know, like in, in, in a little bit of time and you have to build, but this is a big brand new space that people aren't familiar with. And I think that we all need to really ask the right questions in order to make the best decisions. Yeah. And I also think that's a brilliant point because I also think, well, personally for myself, I always think quality, not quantity. So that's the way I like to work. So I prefer to work with five quality brands rather than 25 brands, for example. And I think it should be the other way around with brands as well. Look for the right quality person to work with across the board. And also, like you say, quality can be more expensive. Um, so invest in your marketing. Don't go for the cheapest option because I know there's loads of people out there that might work for really cheap and that means that the quality of the content could potentially be really cheap <laughs> you, know, so, you know and listen that's what I say to my clients if they say to me oh gosh that's your rates i'll go uh well you get what you paid for <laughs> no, quality, quality not con qu quantity no not quantity not quality yeah i've oh, got it wrong now <laughs> oh, yeah, quality yeah exactly so you know yeah, but, like, and i think that i think you brought up a good point and i think we'll end off with this one because i really do appreciate your time is that you, you know look at your marketing budget look at your social media strategy whatever that involves and look at it as a long-term play because you're going into brand. Now, I think that that's what you mentioned where, it, you know, and I think, and I understand why you prefer a more long-term thing because you can actually gauge it. You can see the results. You can see what's happening. It's not yeah. one thing here, one thing here, because we go through so much content, but for example, if, uh, I mean, you know, I, I, we, we follow each other, but like, you know, if I'm following you and I see you post one thing, like, mm -hmm. okay, I mean, you're an influencer. I, you know, so I know that you're posting a bunch of stuff, but in the long term where you're randomly posting the, like, you know, more of that same collaboration, it's also yeah. getting you to know more about the brand, how you're exactly. speaking about it, how you're using it. Like, you're not just presenting me the brand, over time, you're actually educating me on it, which actually makes the brand part for me, like from a business perspective, way more effective as exactly. I move forward with you, because now I'm growing and developing and you're sharing my brand message and growing it with me, as opposed to you just being like, sell this for me, sell this for me. Um, exactly and I think that's I, I think that's the key and I'm, that's why I love I'm so passionate when a brand comes to me and goes we want to work with you and we've got like we what, what about 12 months and I think fantastic because we can sit down together and creatively do really organic and authentic campaigns that just subliminally are part of my life and they see it regularly my followers see it regularly it's not pushy pushy it's not in your face it's really subliminal marketing. It's really relaxed, but it's it's really authentic because it's real to my lifestyle. And I, and I think that that's definitely key. Think longer term, please, guys, because that's crucial. It really is. It makes such a difference. No, really, really <laughs> we are taking it. notes, Naomi. We are taking. <laughs> yeah, no, we're, yeah, exactly. We're we're all like, listen. It, it's so fascinating to talk to to, to so many different people in, in one conversation because you get so many perspectives and point of views. And I think that this has created so much value. Um, Naomi, thank you so kindly. Um, you know, if people oh. want to follow you or they want to, they want to find you, uh, what's the best places for them to do that? Well, probably first of all, my uh, Instagram, and it's on here, Naomi K. Eisted. But you can find me, Naomi K. Eisted, on Twitter, Naomi K. Eisted Official on Facebook. Uh, my blog, my luxury blog is um, ultimatelifestylist.com. Um, and yeah, or just Google me. <laughs> Yeah, you're everywhere. Listen, don't like you know. Everywhere, what I mean? you can't everywhere. get everything. She's everywhere, and, and 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 such a such an absolute lovely human being. So, um, Naomi, thank you so kind of for being on today. Thank um, you so much. So much both of you. It's been a pleasure, and hopefully we can connect um in person in uh, Milan at some time or Italy. Yes, hopefully, yes. Or wherever we do. London yeah. or Canada. 
<laughs> yeah, Canada of London. I mean, like if you Google Naomi, you might see a few photos of us here and there. So, uh, well, it's likely you'll find me anywhere in the world. I'm randomly here, there, and everywhere. Yeah. Um, no, no, so, really, yeah. yeah it's, thank it's you nice, so it's nice to do these. Thank you so much for having me. This has been amazing. You're very Thanks. welcome. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. You. All right, um, everybody, uh, thank you all so kindly. Um, you know, we're, we're just about to wrap up, probably about five minutes, we'll get some closing things. Um, you know, we answered a lot of the questions we received beforehand, uh, which was great, um, and a lot more. It seemed like a lot of our guests were guessing what, you know, they already knew what we were gonna ask before we even asked it. So um, whether it was the form of a question or whether it was in the form of information, I really hope that we pre presented a lot of value and a lot of answers to the things that are that are going on in your mind. The whole point of this brand therapy uh, panel discussions is to continue these kind of conversations with different people from different industries and working with you know within the market that is ever evolving. And uh, you know this is the first of many. We really hope that will really drive a lot of um, a lot of information and value to the market because we're all about growing and helping each other. This isn't. Um, you know, this isn't client and, you know, brand conversation. This is wholesome. This is holistic. This is, you know, branding and marketing and values and what you believe in. And so we really, really appreciate um, all of your questions beforehand. Um, really excited about the turnout here. It's been really, really, for our first one, um, it has been something really special. And we did a pretty short notice because it was coming up to the holidays and we're like, you know what, we got to do them before the holidays so people can really make the most out of their holiday campaigns, the most out of November and December as we finish off this year. So um, we yeah, appreciate everybody here. And, and Luca, if you have uh, anything else to say. Um, I, I hope that uh, all the participants um, uh, experienced and uh, understood the, the, the deep sense and meaning of this panel discussion that it was meant to be uh, very like like I used to say very horizontal and, and not vertical uh, that's the reason why we invited uh, all uh, very different types of, of guests so brands but also influencers so um, and different kinds of businesses from hotels to food and um, beverage to luxury yeah is exactly and i think that when we will do and we will schedule another panel discussion uh, this uh, kind of approach will be uh, further implemented uh, in order to have um, I hope the quality that we had today in this in this discussion, and we do hope me and, and Michele as part of Krasinsenko and, and Yossi as part of Brand Therapy, um, the opportunity to uh, have also uh, even a, a wider a wider audience next time, even if it's this time we had a result that we yeah, was really great. Expect, uh, we didn't expect okay, uh, yeah. so. we're excited we're happy we wanted it uh but yeah it was very overwhelming it was a very beautiful response yeah totally um so uh, really quickly sorry to cut you off luca um but uh if you do want any more information about crescenzi and co about myself um about luca about brand therapy you can reach out to us anytime you want we're on every social there's not many yussi fishers out there um, and uh, there's not many Crescenzi and Co's either. So um, take a look. If you want to send us any DMs or emails, you're more than welcome to. Obviously, you can tell by this discussion, we're more than happy to help and to share um, you know, some information, get into some conversations. If you're looking for a lot more in-depth um, you know, strategies and, and you know, really distinguishing your brand and figuring that out, um, you can, like I said, DM us. If you go to yossifisher.com under brand therapy, we have the full package presentation there, which you can download, take a look on your own. And whenever you're ready, um, you know, feel free to, to give us a shout. We're, we're doing this internationally um, with, uh, with, with, with great um, excitement. And, um, you know, the, the, we look at the, at, the, at the events and we have people from all over the world here. So thank you so kindly all for participating. Um, I'm done uh, speaking, but otherwise, Luca, anything else to say? No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you uh, to all the participants that decided to share with us this uh, 
for us this very special yeah. occasion. And also because Yossi used to live in Milan, now is in Canada. And, um, me and Michele and, and our agency in Milan, Naomi uh, is in Milan. And so it's, it's also um, very, very nice to see so many people from around the world, literally, yeah. uh, that has joined this, this session, this discussion so yeah and we're, we're yeah exactly we're going to be doing we'll be getting more guests from all over the place um you know because we really want to make this a global communications conversation so um thank you all so much for staying with us we went a bit over time i think we're almost close to two hours here so all the attendees that are still here we absolutely love you and appreciate your attention that's very very important for us and the fact that you have so many other things you could be doing but you really sat here to you know improve your perspective to share your time with us and to improve um you know the future of your businesses it, it means a lot to us so thank you very very kindly happy thursday everybody wherever you are in the world happy thursday to everyone a big kiss ciao um, bye